In Alaska's wildest places, the timeless relationship between predator and prey is something precious to be preserved. National Park Service scientists are studying wolves in Alaska's parks, not only to learn about one of North America's most elusive predators, but to judge the health of the larger ecosystem. Wolf research in Alaska's national parks begins in the air, where skilled teams in helicopters and small aircraft spot, track, and collar wolves. My name is John Birch. I'm a wildlife biologist at the National Park Service, both Gates of the Arctic and Yukon Charlie. Um, and my primary job is to be monitoring the wolf population in Yukon Charlie. It involves using radio collars. Um, try to put one or two radio collars in each pack. And uh, usually for Yukon Charlie anyway, we've got 10 to 12 packs usually are, have at least one radio collar in them. Um, and the idea behind it is to monitor change in numbers of wolves that utilize park lands. One of the purposes for Yukon Charlie Rivers National Preserve was to protect wolves and wolf habitat. Uh, wolves are actually mentioned uh, specifically in the enabling legislation of the park. One of the reasons that we have been monitoring wolves for almost 18 years now, it's the second longest wolf study, uh, uh, ongoing wolf study in Alaska, is to better understand the predator-prey relationships that take place within Yukon Charlie Rivers National Preserve. Often the hardest job is finding the wolves to catch and, and finding them in a good place. So it, the process would start out in, we have two or three fixed wing airplanes, Super Cubs usually, as support for the helicopter, looking for wolves to catch. And it's particularly difficult to find wolves um, or packs of wolves where they don't have any radio collars in them. And so we could spend a significant amount of time looking for tracks of wolves in the snow. So you, you fly around and looking in the snow, looking for their tracks, identifying them from all everything else that's running around out there. Uh, once you find wolf tracks, you figure out which way they're going and follow them until you find the wolves. Then when we get the wolves in sight, you know, I'll usually put the insert in, push the dart down in and close the breech of the gun and be ready. And he'll say, okay, get ready. And he maneuvers the helicopter up to where I can get a shot at the wolf. And so I'm sitting behind the pilot and the wolf will be on the same side of the helicopter so he can see it well and I can see it well. And uh, depending on the situation, then it, it can be anything goes, you know, if we're in, I often tell people that are new to darting that it's, it's mostly the pilot. If the pilot's good and can, knows what he's doing, it's really pretty easy to just aim at the wolf and shoot a dart at it. The drug we use is telazole. It's very common for wildlife capture work, um, at least all over the United States, North America. They call it a diso dissociative anesthetic. So it puts them to sleep and has uh, analgesic effect. It, they, they don't feel pain. When the dart hits the wolf, a little charge inside of the dart barrel goes off and, and injects the drug into the wolf. So it's a lot like getting a shot from the doctor in a way. I mean, that it gets stuck and then it injects the, the drug. More often than not, we will stay in the air with the helicopter and at a distance and keep an eye on the wolf ourselves as well as the airplane. So once the wolf goes down, then um, if we're not watching it with the helicopter, the, the super couple tell us, okay, the wolf's down, you can come in and, and get it and we'll land the helicopter uh, nearby. Um, or as close to the wolf as we can. And then we can uh, safely walk up to the wolf. And the wolf will be out for, and easily work on it for 45 minutes, probably, maybe an hour. Kind of depends on the individual wolf. And we can walk up to the wolf and uh, start to do the processing, which primarily involves putting a radio collar on it. The first thing I'll do when I walk up to the wolf probably is, is 
be confident of the wolf's welfare. You know, it's just breathing normally, um, check a pulse pretty quick just with a hand on its chest. Um, we'll some, oftentimes take a temperature of the wolf if it's kind of warm out or they've been run a lot or um, it's, you know, for whatever reason we think the wolf might be overheating, we'll take their temperature and be sure of what's going on with that. We almost always take their temperature. And uh, once we kind of feel confident that the wolf is doing fine, um, then we'll start the processing of it. And usually I'll put the radio collar on it first. Um, we do a series of uh, blood samples that we take. Not really a series, but a, a variety of blood tubes that we take out of one blood draw. So we take about 30 cc's of blood, put it in a variety of tubes, some for serum, some for uh, other blood work that we can do, some of it for genetics. Um, we also take mouth swabs and some hair samples, also just kind of back up uh, for genetic sampling of the wolf. And then we do an assessment of its teeth for mostly for aging. So trying to figure out how old a wolf is, um, it's kind of a guessing game based on tooth wear. And so we've got some measurements we can make with a caliper and that gives us some idea. But we also are just looking at how worn their teeth are to get an idea of their age. After most of that's done, we will then um, pack everything up and, and leave. And usually the wolf is starting to come around by the time we're leaving. They're picking their head up and moving it around quite a bit. And they'll probably be there for an hour or two and then they'll get up and rejoin their pack. And we'll always find them either that afternoon or um, the next day for sure and be sure everything's fine. The monitoring program is a, a partnership between the preserve, Yukon Charlie Preserve, um, and the inventory and monitoring program to help them understand where wolves are, how many of them there are, and where they're going. And we're doing that because our stewardship responsibility is to, in part, help ensure that we have intact predator-prey systems in the preserve. Uh, knowing what we have within the boundaries of the, of the parks, knowing the condition of those natural resources, the wildlife in this case, and again, how the wildlife is, is interacting, the predator-prey relationships, uh, are all very critical components to managing national parklands. The Central Alaska Network has, I think there's 11 vital signs. Anyway, monitoring wolves is one of them in, uh, in Yukon Charlie and Denali and Wrangell St. Elias. The idea was using wolves as a uh, higher up on the food chain to perhaps give us an early warning of something going wrong in the ecosystem. Wolves remain an iconic symbol of wilderness. By using Alaska's wolves as a vital sign, National Park Service scientists are monitoring the ecosystem's health and revealing the complex balance between predator and prey species.